My lords, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much indeed, all of you who have come today, and those who come from a long way and those who come from not so far. And also, Simon, thank you very much indeed for, for hosting us here. Uh, it's a real privilege for EcoVision to be here today. Uh, it was almost a greater privilege when we um, did the installation work and the design work for the renewable solution which is now at Castle Howard. What I wanted to do was to take you through a little bit broader, a little bit of a broader description about renewables before Simon then focuses very much on what happened here at Castle Howard. So I want to talk to you a bit about the types of fuel that uh, is being replaced in your country homes uh, or historic houses, the sort of renewable technologies you might be looking at, then a bit more detail about heat pumps, why they work in historic homes, and then I want to give you an example of Hydro. Our offices are at Barney Court, which is just at the back gate uh, of Hydro, and our landlord is the Prince of Wales. Uh, and that helps us an awful lot. I hope it helps him too, because uh, we both uh, believe the same things in terms of renewables. And then Simon will talk a little bit about Castle Howard. Okay, the, the sort of fuels that you're likely to have in country homes are uh, electric, electrical power, just using electricity, night like storage heaters, that sort of thing. Uh, Ascot House was driven purely by electricity. Oil, which is probably the predominant fuel that's being used. LPG uh, and gas. What renewable heating is doing is replacing your boiler. And that's really the most important thing for people to realise. There's an awful lot of mumbo jumbo, I think, spoken about it, but it's a very simple process. You're replacing the boiler. And photovoltaic cells, which we call PV, replaces some of the electricity that you'll generate. So, what are the renewable heating technologies? In terms of heating, the most appropriate that we have established for large country houses and historic homes tend to be biomass, and Simon will take you through, I think, why he moved down the route he did and away from biomass, but there are some very good reasons why biomass will work in, in some large homes. And also take you through a bit more detail about heat pumps. Before I move on to heat pumps, biomass is driven by three things. Wood chip, that's basically wood that you take from the estate and you chip into small uh, chips. Pellet, which you would tend to purchase and logs where you're logging it. And it's actually important that you understand the fuel that you're going to use when you're putting your biomass solution in. The thing about a biomass plant is that you need to remember you have to manage it. It's like the coal boiler in that you're constantly putting wood into that boiler. So it's not a fire and forget solution, but it does work. And if you have the spare capacity in terms of people and space and you can manage it properly, it's a very effective way of heating a home. In terms of electricity, you can use it generating using uh, photovoltaic cells. That's where you're taking the energy from the sun. Um, and we've got some examples for you out at the front of the house um, and their products which we offer. Wind turbines uh, tend to work in large scale. So you're talking about large tracts of land where you can put wind turbines up. Small wind turbines, generally speaking, do not make economic sense. And then hydropower, where you're using micro or macro, are, again, routes where you can generate electricity. It's actually not a feature that uh, we deal with with at EcoVision, but they certainly do work, and there are uh, solutions in the United Kingdom where it has worked successfully. What do we do at EcoVision? Well, we're technology and vendor neutral, and that's deliberate. So we've decided that what we don't want to do is to come in and say, what you need is this, and be prescriptive about this is the only technology. So the reports that you receive from us, and this is the only sales that I've got, is much more general telling you what we think the solution might well be. But our focus tends to be on heat pumps for heating and cooling. And interestingly, with a heat pump, you can cool as well as heat. Very useful for office buildings. We do biomass boilers for heating. We do solar thermal heating. That's where you're using solar panels to produce hot water. And we do photovoltaic cells for electricity. So let's talk a bit about heat pumps, which is the main reason why we're here today. Water source heat pumps close loops are what we have at Castle Howard. And what you're doing is you're extracting the heat from the lake or from the river. Now, when you're talking about a heat pump, it has a description for it. So there's a water source heat pump, a ground source heat pump, and an air source heat pump. And all the water the ground and the air is doing is replacing the fuel source. So instead of having an oil-fired boiler, you've got a water boiler, if you like. It's actually taking the, it's taking the energy from the water or taking the energy from the ground. And in this particular case at Castle Howard, it's taking the energy from the ground and you'll have an opportunity, sorry, from the water and have an opportunity to see that later. And the picture that you can see at the top is when the loops were put into the lake uh, on the north side of the building. That was a closed loop system where what we're doing is extracting the heat from loops within a lake. 
There's also something called an open loop system, which becomes a little bit more complicated. And what you're doing here is you're putting a borehole down into an aquifer. You're extracting the water from the aquifer. Having taken the water out, you take the heat out of the water, and then you pump the water back into the aquifer. And the largest one when we started was in the northwest, at the um, Northwest Regional Development Authority, a place called Daresbury near Warrington. Uh, and this uh, was just commissioned a few weeks ago for this building um, in the northwest. What it does is it extracts, extracts water at 30 litres a second from the aquifer, takes the heat out of the water, and re-injects it into a well. Generally speaking, they, they tend to work for new buildings. You can take the water from a river. There are examples of that that we've done in the south of England, or you can take it from an aquifer. The trouble with aquifers in the United Kingdom is the water moves around. So when the water diviner tells you to put the borehole here, suddenly the water's moved to here, there is a problem. So you just need to make sure that the location of where you derive the water from uh, is clear. <coughs> Ground source heat pumps, which tend to be the heat pumps that we use uh, more often for large country houses because people tend to have large acres of land and what we're doing is using trenches and there are two examples here the one on the left hand side is Tythrop Park which is in Oxfordshire the one on the right is Ascot House which is a Rothschild National Trust house uh, in Bedfordshire or Buckinghamshire um, what's happening here is as it's a ground source solution rather than water where you're extracting the heat from the water what you're doing here is extracting the heat from the ground. It's about five, four, sorry, four to five feet deep trenches. You have pipes in the trenches. Once you put the trenches in, you refill the trenches, and then you never touch them again. They last for about 100 years, and the heat pumps last for about 25 years. There are a number of examples of these across the UK. We've done a lot of them. They are very efficient. And the reason for using trenches rather than boreholes is the cost of trenches, the work to do it, tends to be less expensive than drilling boreholes. Alternatives you can use are boreholes, um, and at Barley Court, which is actually our offices on the left, there are six boreholes there, and on the right-hand side there are four boreholes which are dedicated to the greenhouses at Highgrove. Here we're putting in 60 to 120 metre boreholes. The reason we tend to use boreholes is there would be less space. So if you had the fields to use trenches, you'd use trenches. If you didn't have so much space, you would use boreholes. Interestingly here, the applications are quite interesting. The building on the left is a 1680 building. Five years ago, people would have told you, you can't do this in old buildings. The one on the right is greenhouses. Three years ago, you would have been told you can't do this in greenhouses. And they work in both perfectly well. It's all about how you design it. The last example are air source heat pumps. There's an example of that out on the, and when you have your tour afterwards, you'll see a nine kilowatt air source heat pump. Um, there's actually one which is located just there. Very useful for cottages and smaller homes. Um, it works for something like a five bed, up to a five bedroom barrack style, style house. Very easy to install. They don't require any groundwork and it's just something that's outside the building. Work very well for swimming pools, uh, estate cottages. They're ground mounted and they can work up to 30 meters from the building. So they're quite effective piece of equipment. Uh, on the right hand side for the swimming pool, very cheap way, if you can have a cheap way of heating a swimming pool, uh, but probably about 20% of the cost of actually running ordinary oil. So why do they work in historic and country houses? Well, if you think back, the way it used to be was that people used to light the fires at 5 o'clock in the morning. They were sustained until, until midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning. So the whole body of the building was being heated. What we then did in all of our homes was we changed it. and We put in central heating. We fired it up at 6 o'clock in the morning and turned it off at 9 o'clock. And then we fired it up again at 6 o'clock in the evening and turned it off at 9 o'clock. And surprise, surprise, the fabric of the building wasn't being kept warm. What you're doing with a heat pump is you're running it for much longer periods. So you're running it throughout the day and you're maintaining the heat of the building. And it's the maintenance of that fabric, of the, the heat of the fabric of the building, that actually enables you to uh, keep the building warm for longer and at lower temperatures. And I know that Simon's got some uh, numbers there and we'll share with you how they started it um, before we actually installed the, the heat pumps here. But in essence, what you're doing is you're running lower temperature heat for a lot longer. And the result of that is you spend a lot less money. So that's